Hello, welcome to Integrated Wellbeing YouTube channel and podcast for people in grief and the professionals who serve them. We provide education, inspiration, and practical tools by interviewing those bereaved by loss, mental health professionals, and grief specialists. Integrated Wellbeing Institute seeks to awaken the griever to their inner peace through the guidance of their body. I'm Georgina Eggleston, the director of the Institute, and today I'm very, very happy to welcome my colleague and friend, Patricia Orpanidis. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, Georgina. What a pleasure to be here with you this morning. Oh, I'm so, so thankful that you said yes to my invitation. And I want you, our audience, to know that Patricia is a retired elementary education teacher, a certified kundalini yoga teacher, and a certified body-mind therapist. And we met on December the 1st, or November the 1st, it was, of 1998, when I showed up as a trainee at the Rubenfeld Synergy Group and Patricia was one of the teaching interns. I still remember that night when we had to stand up, Patricia, and introduce ourselves. I'm and so, yeah, I'm so grateful, Georgina, that we've stayed in contact. We've been friends for so many years. It's just been such a, a, a gift for me to know you. So thank mm -hmm. you so much. Yes, you're welcome. And Patricia is now taking the certification training. So she will be able to facilitate somatic grief relief with people in person and online. And it's been quite an adventure, hasn't it, Patricia? Yes, it has. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has. But the one thing about Patricia that I have observed as we moved from the teacher-student relationship into a colleague-friend relationship is she always talks about her inner child more than anybody else I've ever met and my friends. And so she has an awareness of her inner child that's been so instructive to me. So Patricia, let's start with your grief story of that seven-year-old little girl. Will you please share with our audience what happened to you? What happened to her? Well, actually, my grief story starts even sooner than seven because my parents divorced when I was three. And oh, wow. And I loved my daddy so much. And he was out of my life. And I only saw him one time in the four years between the divorce and my mother's suicide at seven. He came to visit one time. So here was this little girl with a broken heart for those years. She had a stepfather that she loved. Uh, my mother had remarried. But then again, when my mother committed suicide at seven, I lost my stepfather, my mother, and this man that I once upon a time had known and loved came back into my life. This stranger became my father again. So wow. a lot of trauma, a lot of abandonment, a lot of confusion in, in very early childhood. And uh, I've also done a lot of work on that, a lot of therapy. Okay. And right now I'm going to educate you and all of the people watching because your mother died of suicide. She yes. didn't commit suicide. Okay. okay. She Got died. it? Yes. Yeah. Died of suicide. That, Georgina, why do, we, why do we phrase it differently? I'm so glad you asked really and truly. It goes back to the word commit is from the Catholic Church. For many, many years, the Catholic Church looked at suicide as such a deadly sin. People could not have a funeral service in the church or be buried in Catholic cemeteries. It also, uh, so that's one connection to the word. The other connection to the word is people are committed to prison. Okay. And so that's the other connotation. Because what we're finding in the research is very, very, very often people feel like they're in a dark tunnel and they can't turn around. And so they go through with the act of killing themselves 
as a, a, the only way. The and only we way. Know this, we know this research simply because those people who have attempted suicide and been unsuccessful have then been interviewed. Their research is being done. What happened? And we're finding in as little as 20 minutes that this, it just descends and it happens. And so it's not even a choice for some people that's conscious by any means. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're there. Yes, they do it. They're out of their mind. Their mind goes offline. And that's yes. what I really feel happened to my son, Reed. Right. Is yes. that he's left the school saying, hey, I'll see you guys next year on the basketball floor. Yes. And in that less than five minutes it took to run home. It was bitterly cold. He didn't have a jacket on. Something snapped and he his brain went offline. He was yes. so embarrassed he wanted to die. So had your mother, so we got the three-year-old wound. Right. Had your mother struggled with depression or something like that? Oh yes, she was, I, I believe she was bipolar. And what I remember of my mother, I remember her being mostly depressed. I remember this. I, I don't remember her ever being in joy, ever being, you know, light. I, the memories that I have are of this depressed woman. And uh, my stepfather was doing a training to be a vet um, in the next town. So she was home alone with us a lot. Mm. He was working part time at the university. It was very hot. It was um, September, October. It was oppressively hot in uh, in Iowa. And it's just like, you know, all these things. She also had a thyroid condition. Um, she had had a complete hysterectomy right after I was born, a young woman. And the doctor gave her a complete hysterectomy. I, we don't know why those years, you know, this is 70, almost 76 years ago. Who knows what was in this doctor's mind? So she had a lot of physical things going on as mm. well as the mental. Mm. Yeah, so. Wow. A young woman, but just so, so uh, troubled. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is the physical. Yes. You know, I I, re I remember when I had a complete hysterectomy. They gave me a shot, and 30 days later, I was a crazy woman. And thankfully, yeah. my husband said, "Hey, it's hormones. Yeah. We've got to get you to a place right to get some support." Right. Thankfully, and, I had a doctor's appointment the next week or yeah. two weeks later, yeah. and things, you know, were regulated. Yeah. But it, it's like you can't do anything about this. It's right. Just, yeah, and and there was nobody there to help her. There, you know, that she was. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. there were just a lot of a lot of factors mm -hmm. that played into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you want to share any of the story that happened. Um, please do uh, about your seven-year-old self and then we can move to your healing. Right, well, it's interesting because over my lifetime, um, I'm, I've been led to believe that there's a, a part of the brain that when you experience a trauma like that, it's it's very hard for you to remember things. You, yes. you experience them, but then you, don't, you can't recall them. Like my yes. kids say to me, don't you remember mom this and that? And I know I was living it very, you know, very fully, but I don't have a lot of memories. Sure. But I have these strong memories about when my mother died. I still have the images. I have the images of being at the funerals, the funeral in, in uh, Iowa, the funeral in Flagstaff. I remember being at the cemetery, standing all alone at the side of the grave. You know, all these adults were so completely uh, devastated by what had happened that here what here I was on the sidelines this little girl in this gray coat because it was October and nobody holding my hand nobody comforting me because they were so in their own grief that they didn't even consider you know my how I might be feeling and I don't remember anyone ever taking me in their lap and holding me and talking to me and I actually had another trauma. I found out about my mother's death, what had happened, when, how it had happened when I was nine and I was at her mother's, my grandmother, my maternal grandmother's house. And she said, why don't you go in the back bedroom and look at the, look at the uh, sympathy cards that were sent, you know, when your mom died. So I'm in the bedroom by myself once again, looking for- By yourself. Mm -hmm through the sympathy cards at age nine and here's the 
newspaper clipping that said that she had committed suicide. Oh, died. Died. Oh, sorry, died. That she had died from suicide. Mm -hmm. And I found, and I never, when I came out of the room, I never said anything to my grandmother. She never said anything to me. This was a secret that we held. And then uh. about years later that she did the very same thing to my brother who was two years older. So he and I had this secret that neither one of us shared with each other. And yet we both knew what had happened. So just a lot of trauma, a lot of, you know, people just not knowing how to deal with this and not exactly. knowing how to help. Wow. Them. Yeah. So, yeah, just, and so that abandonment has just, it went on and on and on in my life. And every time something would happen to me, I would, it, when I did therapy and when I did inner child work, it always came back to the abandonment. And I was introduced to my inner child, I think when I was in my 40s, I started. Oh, wow, Patricia. Yes, because I lived in Greece for many years. And all the years that I was in Greece, I was doing Hatha Yoga. And that was how I healed my depression because I was seriously depressed. Oh. Seriously depressed as a teenager. I would go to school. I was an A student. I do my homework. I do my work. But then I'd come home and just sleep the hours away. That's how I lived my life as a teenager. And then as an adult, I got married too, too young. A uh, very dysfunctional relationship in Greece. And... I continued to function as a as a parent and as a wife, but I was also very seriously depressed. So the yoga studio was what saved my life because there was a book. We had a beautiful library and I started reading different books. I'd stand in front of the, the uh, bookcase and I'd say, okay, God, what do you want me to read? And I'd go and pick a book and I would read. And it was all about my healing through this through this beautiful library that we had and doing yoga. So I healed my depression. I was, you know, functioning, doing well, but the relate the marriage was not doing well, and we moved to the states. And as soon as we moved to the states, I got into therapy. Okay. And my first therapist introduced me to the to my inner child, and it was like love at first sight. <laughs> oh. oh, that's amazing! <laughs> love so, at first sight. Oh, that's so neat. So I have a question. You know me and timelines. How long were you in Greece doing yoga? 18 years I lived in Greece. And then, and how long were you doing yoga? How long did the yoga? Oh, I started yoga? doing yoga. I started doing, my, my older son will be 50 next month. I started doing yoga um, right after he was, let's see if it was when I was pregnant with him. Anyway, right around the time, that time, at almost 50 years ago. Okay, great. So it, it took like, uh, five, ten years to heal your depression with yoga? I Yeah, I would say, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then you moved to the United States and love at first sight. Yeah, yeah. Just this beautiful little being presented herself to me and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love her. <laughs> How old was she? Because they're all different ages. These yeah, children. She, was, she was young. I would say she was around five or six, maybe. Yeah, I don't okay. think. So she was between the divorce time and the death time. Yeah. yeah. And she's just been such a part of my life. And I have a journal and I journal with her. And, you know, she's always, she always lets me know when we need to have some time together. And How does she do that, Patricia? That's amazing. Well, she can just get very upset about things. And I'll think, oh, you know, I need to, what's going on here? And then I'll get my journal out and, and we'll talk or I'll do my meditation because I'm, I'm a, you know, I meditate every day and I'm, um, so yeah, we have this great relationship and, um, it's just been a journey. I mean, you know, she hasn't always loved me. She's been at, angry at me often and lets me know that <laughs> like you're not doing what you need to do. You're not listening to me. <laughs> you mean you weren't the perfect parent to her? <laughs> I haven't been the perfect parent. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm learning, you know, as I go, just like raising my own, my sons, I, I, mm -hmm. I learn as I go and I make my mistakes and I ask for forgiveness and, and on we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she's definitely a very, very big part of my life. Because yes. as you speak, what I'm hearing is, is when she's upset, you stop and the two of you have a connection and you soothe her. 
Well, she's very wise. She's very wise. and she Okay, just, tell us she, more. She's very wise and she lets me know what she needs. And okay. then, you know, and I listen. I listen to her because she she has the answer. She knows what she needs. And it's mm -hmm. about acknowledging that and really honoring that and giving her lots of love. I'm always telling her how much I love her. And it's it's authentic. She knows that I mean it. I'm not just saying, oh, I love you. I'm, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. so what if, uh, what are two or three of the things she lets you know she needs? If you'd share that with our audience, this is profound work that you've done and it's very intimate work. So you certainly don't need to share anything. Well, she lets me know when she's angry. Okay. She lets me know when she's hurt. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she lets me know when she needs to be held. I mean, recently, with all the things that are going on in the world, you know, she says, I just need to be held. I just need to know that you are, you feel me, you, you know, and, and I will just actually hold her. You know, I have a little stuffed animal and I will hold her because mm -hmm. she needs to feel that connection to me, to really feel protected mm -hmm. and loved and acknowledged. Yeah, it's so mm -hmm. important. It's just so important. We all have that in, in, in us, you know, and I encourage that with my own clients. It's like, just, just hold her, listen to her, mm -hmm. tell her how much you care about her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And I'm very curious then with the holding, that's the touch that yeah. you went on to as a trainee and then as part of the faculty, how did you find the Ruben Feld Synergy method, Patricia. Yeah, it's interesting because a friend of mine, I was in a, a program when I came back to the States, I wanted to go to school because that was one of the things I really missed in Greece was I didn't have the opportunity to continue my education. And when I came back, I thought, well, what's the what's the quickest way that I can do something so that I can get out there and start, you know, working and whatever. So I did a chemical dependency counseling program at the community college. Oh, yes. I thought, well, I could maybe I'll be a counselor, even though I'm not. I've never had had a chemical de uh, dependency problem. I definitely was a codependent. I, I learned a, I learned in that program that I'm a codependent. <laughs> so how do you define codependent for our audience? Because oh, it may be new to one or two people listening. Oh, dear. Codependent. Well, we're <laughs> all taking care of others before we take care of ourselves. We're all yeah, we're always putting others first. And, you know, it's just that whole that whole dependency thing of depending on other people's liking you, loving you, needing you, that I guess that's my definition of it. Thank you. And now I've even chunked it down even farther and I'm saying overgiver. Overgiver. I love that. Overgiver. <laughs> so please continue. I'm a recovering, I'm a recovering overgiver. Okay. Well, guess what? I am too. So okay. that's why we've been friends all these years and colleagues. Okay. So yeah. please continue. So so anyhow, one of the women in the in our group had gotten a flyer. She was up in Wickenburg and she had gotten a flyer about this woman, Alana Rubenfeld. And she gave me the flyer and she said, I think you would you would really like this woman. I think you'd be interested in her work. And she, and Alana was at, at uh, going to be at Esalen. Oh, so I went to Esalen and I got to be the practice, the client on the table. Wow. And she did a whole session with my inner child. Yeah. And so I, of course, that was like, you know, two months before the, the training was starting and I signed up and I was going to go and become a Rubenfeld synergist. Yeah. Did you study with her in New York? Yes. Yes. At the Brownstone. Yes, at the Brownstone. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh. was, it was just fabulous. Yeah. It was so wonderful. And so many changes were happening in my life. I Eventually I was going through a, my own divorce and I mean, it was just, it was time a time in my life when Rubenfeld Synergy was exactly what I needed. I had a fabulous Rubenfeld Synergist in Phoenix because I was living in Phoenix at the time. And uh, Cappy and I, I went to Cappy every week. I loved her work. She did art therapy as well as Rubenfeld Synergy. And I just, I made so much progress and just healed my life with, with Cappy. It was, it was amazing. Rubenfeld Synergy is, is amazing. I love it. It is, it is. It's that dance between talk and touch. Yes. And what I appreciate about this modality so much is it takes a person inside 
to discover the power within them, the yes. wisdom that's yes. within them. And you use the word wisdom about describing your inner child. Yes. She's so wise. She is so wise. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the body is wise. And this is absolutely what listen to the body. The body holds all of these memories, all of these things that you've experienced. And it has the wisdom to help you to heal. It does. And it's I've always, you know, been connected with my body. And uh, it's it is. It's so phenomenal. We have the tools. We have mm -hmm. everything we need within us. Mm -hmm. We do. We just forget that. And in a time of being in grief where it's so dark, we feel like we're down in the bottom of a well and there's no ladder. How do I get out of here? Right. The body can be a guide, a very wise and gentle guide. Yes. And then, all, go ahead. No, no. It's also such a beautiful practice. It's so creative. I mean, the sessions that I have had and the sessions that I have given, I am just always amazed at the creativity of the universe and how it speaks to us. How, you know, the it, it's just, it's so creative. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I can't so say I, <laughs> How did Alana find your inner child? How did that, do you remember? Because I know when we do these sessions, we're in a trance. Yeah, it was such a long time ago. It was about my ex-husband was the main okay. thing. Was that, you know, it's like Paris is not, Paris is not my mother. Was oh. not one of the things, Paris is not my mother. So it had to do with my codependency. She worked with my inner child, you know, it was just, mm -hmm. but it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But it was found, I do remember that it was That's very- That's enough, that's enough. Thank you. Not my mother. Paris was my husband's name. Paris mm -hmm. is not my mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how many of us need to remember that? We uh, project that mothering on people and very understandable given what happened with you. Right. At the age you were at. And really, you know, with your mother being unavailable because of her illness. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is just absolutely fascinating. And I'm curious, it, you know, what, what we say here at the Institute is that you're not broken by this loss. You're broken open like a seed to grow in self-awareness, actually root down into self-awareness and then grow in new connections. And so you became very, very self-aware, no doubt, through the yoga, through the teacher, the therapist that introduced you to your inner child. And then it increased with Rubenfeld Synergy, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And it's always been, it's been a lifelong journey. I mean, even when I'm not doing Rubenfeld, because I'm not having sessions anymore, sure. but I still can find ways, you know, I, when I was teaching, if I had things going on with kids at school, it was always about me coming back to what's happening with this student and going into my own self, to my inner child, to my wisdom, to find out how can I heal this? How can I look at this? How can I understand this? And I've just done that through the different tools, you know, through the body centered awareness, through the inner child, through therapy, just used all these tools mm -hmm. to heal myself, to find myself. Yes, yes. And what does healing look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? That's a that's a beautiful question, Georgina. That it's it's an ongoing process. We know that. There's, we do know that. <laughs> there's always something that needs to be healed. Um, yes. It's when I feel inner peace. When I can feel peaceful when things are going on around me. When I can find joy in little things. You know, even when when there's so much devastation around me. That's what I strive for, you know, that in the moment, can I be at peace? Can I find a gentleness with myself? Am I doing my myself, you know, my self care? If I'm not, well, I need to get busy doing that because by being taking care of myself, then I can withstand all of the outside things. Yes. So it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's an ongoing practice. Mm -hmm. It really, really is. And we and have so many tools. We're given so many things. We are breathing, our breathing. My goodness, do we, can we just sit? I've been doing a really focused, <clears throat> excuse me. I've been doing a very focused breathing now with my meditation. And it's, it's 
helping me to feel more centered, to feel less busyness in my mind, to go deeper in my meditation, just by doing this specific breathing. I mean, and we mm. have breath. It's ours. It is. It is. And I'm curious, um, is there any way that you can demonstrate that breathing sitting in the position you are to um, allow our audience to learn a new tool? Well, I, what I do, I just do, um, you know, it's just a, a box breathing. You start, you breathe okay. in, you breathe in for five, you hold for five, you exhale for five and you just sit for five and right. you for five, you know, and it's that, that kind of, yes. breathing. then you can extend it. You, after you do five minutes, do seven, do eight, do 10. Ultimately, you're looking for 15 seconds. Oh, you are? 30, 45, I said minutes, didn't I? Seconds. You're looking for 15, 30, 45, 60 seconds. So you're doing a minute of this okay. box. Okay. And, but I start with five, go up mm -hmm. to seven, eight. Uh -huh. I notice uh -huh. deeper, my, you know, my mind gets with, I go really deeply into my third eye and it really calms me down. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, it's very beautiful, centering and calming. And what I love about what you just shared, thank you so much for sharing that, is it's simple. Yes. It provides, so the simplicity is there, the stability is there, and we can then surrender into it to allow whatever to be released to be released, and it takes us into a deep, deep stillness. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And those have been the intentions for me these these days and so thank you so much because it's so simple and it's nothing new you said box breathing and i immediately exactly what you were exactly. talking about exactly yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and it I just could... takes a few minutes you know you can do it for five minutes i've i've been setting my timer so that you know i started doing it for 15 minutes now i'm doing it for 20 minutes and you just wow. you know, work with your own body. Don't put pressure on yourself. People think, oh, I can't meditate. I can't meditate. I don't know how to do this. Yes. We can. We can. And it's so simple. Just, you know, take it in increments. Start with five seconds. Move up, you know, sit for five minutes. Just, you know, don't pressure yourself. Mm -hmm. Just allow yourself to, to relax into it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really appreciate is you are at that place in your life with you have the awareness and self-compassion to truly listen. And as you come into that place of peace, and here at the Institute, we call it well-being, well-being within, you come into that place and then it radiates out from you. Yes. And yes. you don't have to do a thing. It becomes your natural state. It's a presence. Yes, that's and that's that's what we want to happen. Yeah, we want to be able to be out in the traffic driving, <laughs> dealing with family issues, you know, <laughs> whatever is in our environment, we want to be able to be calm and peaceful. And, and uh, yeah, this mm -hmm. is what I strive for. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is what I'm always hoping for, striving well, for. Yeah, and, and you and I have both talked about the fact that social media can pull you down into a hole and get you all spun up oh, yeah. and then you've got to come back. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, bring and my inner child always lets me know if I've been on Instagram too long, she'll say, get away from that. You got we got to do some, we got to do some art. Get your <laughs> out. We need to do some, you know, some, we need to do some stuff, some creative stuff around here. Cause I'm feeling uh, despair, depressed, uh, unhappy, whatever she's feeling. And then we, you know, we mm -hmm. have some time together. Yeah, yeah. She loves art. She loves music. She absolutely loves music. And I do ah. too. We, we play a lot of music. We do art. Yeah. Do you dance to the music? Yeah, sometimes. Uh -huh, sometimes. Okay. Okay. Do you sing out loud? Oh, I have. You know, when my mother passed, that year that, that uh, because the first several months I lived, my dad, my father, and his new wife, my stepmom, were married and so he decided that we should uh, they should have their honeymoon time which every therapist i've ever seen just pulls their hair out but anyway <laughs> he needed his he needed his honeymoon time so uh, my brother and i went to live with my mother's sister my aunt and uncle and uh, their 
three at the time, three children, one on the way. We lived with them for a school semester. So um, I was always, always singing. I'd sing at the playground. I'd sing at night when we were all going to sleep. I was the one who serenaded all the four, you know, the five of us, three, four, five. Wow. And I always was singing. I loved to sing. Yeah. I still oh, love that, it. That's still. absolutely amazing. Yes. Yeah. I did a lot of art also as a teenager. I was always doing a lot of art. Um, and I feel that was my that was my therapy. You know, I was depressed, but I, the hours that I was I was doing a lot of art, and um, yeah, I actually had some talent. I have my father and my grandfather were both artists. How interesting! Did you have a specific medium? Colored pencils, paints. I actually would just do you know pencil drawings or yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh huh. Did yes. some acrylics a little bit later on, yeah, and I've I've abandoned it. I don't know why. I I have everything that I could. I mean, I have so many art materials that I could be using. I think it's the time thing. You know, you get busy doing other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always see. I have a friend who has chosen to keep the dining room table as her art table. Great and idea. She and her husband have found a different place to eat in their home. Mm -hmm. But then when she has 20 minutes, she'll sit down and work on a piece in progress or even whip something out. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. I could easily mm -hmm. do that. Just have everything out and then you just pick it up and, and draw for a little while. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then that way it nurtures us yes. in a different kind of way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful that we had an art therapist here um, recently. Her name is uh, Carrie McCarthy, and she's written an art program. Actually, I keep the book on my desk right here. Oh, uh, in, in our antidote to anxiety number 32, there's a link to this scribble project wow. so i'll make sure that you get that and yes put that link maybe even again under your um interview oh right. that would be fabulous because i i love art therapy i art there again i'm always amazed when you give someone a piece of paper and some colored pencils or pens how everyone gets into this space of just you know, just loving being connected with that. I've done that with my yoga classes before um, when we're we're looking at, you know, a chakra that has to do more with creativity and they will just get so absorbed and make these beautiful, beautiful drawings. And I just always absolutely love um, when that happens because it's, it's so beautiful and powerful. Well, and what I'm aware of is the music and the art are things of play yes. that we do with young children. Yes. And it goes back to nurturing that inner child and giving us permission because in grief, it is so heavy. Yes. We need to be able to be like that dolphin to come up for psychological yes. air. Yes. And by being able to sing something or right. listen to a playlist, it can okay. be very nurturing and shifting our energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a child, I remember, I mean, I played alone a lot. I loved to be alone. I wasn't, it didn't bother me. I had my dolls, you know, I was always the mommy to my dolls and I had a doll house and I made uh, paper doll clothes and I sewed clothes for my dolls. I was always doing all those creative. Yes. Things those creative things related to home and family and, you know, what I was really wanting to have in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that wisdom within was always there saying, okay, you can do this and this will help you to heal and this will help you to feel better and you'll feel joy in this way. And I always mm -hmm. felt, you know, that I was being loved and supported. I didn't know consciously that was what was happening, but I see it now mm -hmm. that that was how I was being healed and, and supported. So I'm really curious, this question just came to mind and it may be one that we can't even address, but what I'm hearing is, is that little girl at three years old was specifically abandoned in the divorce. Mm -hmm. And then with her mother's illness, there was that abandonment and then subsequent death by suicide. And here she was in her gray coat 
on a chilly, chilly day in Iowa all by herself. So that's a huge boulder. Yeah, on a scale of one to 10, that's beyond 10. Yes. Yeah. Yes. At what time in your life did you begin to feel like the abandonment was coming up to more of a neutral and then maybe even in a time in your life where you were living above the abandonment? Does that make sense? <laughs> That's quite a question because it because is. Because all through my life, I'm, I'm, I'm soon to be 76 years old. Next month, I'll be 76. All through oh. my life. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm very functioning. I feel I'm healthy and I'm, you know, yes. I have a, a, um, a, a good life. Yes. Any time throughout my life, no matter what the challenge was, and there are always challenges. If I would there look, are. When I would look at it, it was always like that theme of abandonment. And I'm like, oh, for heaven's sakes, here we go again. It's okay. all about abandonment. But all right. Recently, I would say in the last six months, in the mm -hmm. last six months, something has shifted, and I really feel um, that I have a, a handle on it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And, I have a handle on it. Yeah, and what I appreciate about this is, is that you've got this theme that comes up to get your awareness to remind you that there's some healing work to do. And what I'm imagining is, is it takes less time to become aware yes. and less time to take action. Yes, thank you. Yes, it's usually just a little session with myself. It could be, you know, 30 minutes or an hour and I've got, okay, I got it, I got it. Now I get uh -huh. it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And we're back on the road to a wonderful life. Right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. The good life, as we used to say in Nebraska when I lived there. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so amazing. So as our time together comes to a close today, and we have specifically talked so much about the inner child, for our, the people who are grieving and the professionals who serve them, our audience, is there anything else you'd like to share with them today? Because we've gone deep mm -hmm. and we've gone wide and we've gone throughout your life. Over, We've covered over 70 years. Mm -hmm. So is there one thing that just kind of bubbles up is before I go, I'd like you to remember. Each one of us is worth it. We are worth healing ourselves we are worth feeling good about ourselves about our lives being happy we're here to be happy to be in our joy and and it's the the tools are there we can heal ourselves we can make the changes that we need to make and i just i really celebrate each and every one of you and i'm just so hopeful that something we said here today will help you to really realize that you are totally worth being happy, being healed, living your life to the fullest. And it is possible. It is possible. And I and, just want, I wish everyone just wellness. Just absolutely. Wellness. Wow. Because it's Thank so you. much more fun to be in your joy than it is to be in your grief or to be in your sadness. It's so much more fun to just really enjoy life in the moment, in the moment, because mm -hmm. there will be sadness, there will be grief, there will be despair. But in the moment, to really be able to feel the joy that we all deserve. Thank you so much, Patricia. And for us today, it's going to be one of those things. Patricia gave you the vision and I'm giving you the permission. Because so often when people are grieving, they feel they don't have permission to smile or laugh or be in happiness and joy. So listen again, Patricia is giving you the vision you're worth being happy. I can't thank you enough for being here and bringing your inner child and her wisdom to us and her play. Thank you, Georgina. Thank you. It was my pleasure. It was so much fun. Thank you so much. It was so much fun. You take deep care. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.